chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul, for five minutes. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to introduce a very simple piece of legislation to repeal the infamous Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act, quietly signed into law by the President on New Year's Day. What a way to usher in the new year. Section 1021 essentially codifies into law the very dubious claim of presidential authority under, 10, under 2001 authorization for the use of military force to indefinitely detain American citizens without access to legal representation or due process of law. Section 1021 provides for the possibility of the U.S. military acting as a kind of police force on U.S. soil, apprehending terror suspects, including Americans, and whisking them off to an undisclosed location indefinitely. No right to attorney, no right to trial, no day in court. This is precisely the kind of egregious distortion of justice that Americans have always ridiculed in so many dictatorships overseas. A great man named Solzhenitsyn became the hero of so many of us when he exposed the Soviet Union's extensive gulag system. Is this really the kind of a United States we want to create in name of fighting terrorism? Some have argued that nothing in Section 1021 explicitly mandates holding Americans without trial. But it employs vague language radically expanding the detention authority to include anyone who has substantially supported certain terrorist groups or associated forces. No one has defined what those ter terms mean. What is an associated force? Sadly, too many of my colleagues are too willing to undermine our Constitution to support such outrageous legislation. One senator even said about American citizens being picked up under section, under this section of the NDAA, quote, when they say, I want a lawyer, you tell them, shut up. You don't get a lawyer, close quote. Is this acceptable in someone who has taken an oath to uphold the Constitution? Mr. Speaker, of course, I recognize how critical it is that we identify and apprehend those who are suspected of plotting attacks against Americans. But why do we have so little faith in our judicial system? Have we not tried in civilian court and won convictions of hundreds of individuals for terrorist or related activities? I fully support continuing to do so. But let us not abandon what is so unique and special about our system of government in the process. I hope my colleagues will join my effort to overturn this shameful section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act. And I yield back.